The short video is meant really primarily as a, an augmentation to the already given classroom demonstration. It's really just a little bit of a recap in case any of you have forgotten some of the things that I've shown you in the much longer demonstration. Now keep in mind, uh, whenever you're sitting down with a torch, to try and organize things a little bit neater than you usually find them so that you can get at everything you need to um, and everything's set just exactly like you want it prior to actually starting the torch. Wear some safety glasses. That's the first thing I want everybody to remember. And make sure that you uh, don't have any paper towels on the top of your soldering board and that you're really thinking about everything ahead of time. I'm going to take the camera and zoom in a little bit closer uh, and show you how to turn the tank on, how to light the torch, and a little bit about soldering just as a recap. It shouldn't take very long. What I'm going to do here is give a quick demonstration of the actual soldering process. I already have a ring that's roughly made, but it has a nice clean joint. I've sawn through it a couple of times. I have a piece of fire brick here, some flux, a dish of water, a small container to, to hold my snippets of solder, and some small wire cutters, along with a third hand, which I'm going to position right here, and some medium solder. I'll set the ring right here on top of the fire brick held by the third hand, and I will apply some flux. Not much, mind you. Flux is uh, going to be something that you can control the amount of solder flow with. It'll, the solder will only flow with this flux, and if I put too much flux on, it's not going to stop my solder from flowing, but it will allow the solder to flow all over the place. So I want to be careful. Now I have a little bit of flux still stuck on the tip of my soldering pick. And I'm going to just set that aside for now, and I'll use that to pick up these tiny snippets of solder that I'm going to use. I have the wire cutters with the little box of the wire cutter facing down into this little dish, and I will cut some very, very short snippets of solder. I only need two, probably, but I cut a few more because I tend to lose them. They're so small. And I'll take my soldering pick. These, these guys are very, very little. You don't need much. And if you don't use much, you don't have to clean much. Okay, now I'll just turn my tank on, an eighth of a turn. Here's my, here's my torch. I just had to grab a striker. Notice I turned the valve very, very little to get some gas out of this. And I checked my striker prior to lighting the torch, make sure it works. Slight twist of the valve and just strike it right in front. Now I want to adjust this flame so that it's got a nice sound, like a little jet engine sound to it. I want a nice beautiful little blue cone coming out and keep in mind the tip of that blue cone is the hottest. I'll move my dish out of the way. I'm going to come at this flame, at this ring, at the joint of the ring, at a perpendicular angle, so that I can get both sides equally heated. I'm going to dry it out first with the torch way back here, and then I, I can use my pick to push the solder snippets around to keep them right on the seam. Once the flux has stopped bubbling, and I've got this solder exactly where I want it, which I've got to adjust it right now, This is medium solder, by the way. I put the blue tip right on the solder joint. The, the solder is exactly where it wants to be. It melts and it should settle right into the seam just like that. That's all it takes. It's all in a, <clears throat> excuse me, it's all in a preparation. Now I'll take the third hand and quench this. And that ring is ready to go into the pickle for at least five minutes. Then I'll dry it after I wash it, of course. I'll wash it, rinse it after the pickle, dry it, and then put it on a ring mandrel and hammer it with a rawhide mallet to get it perfectly dry. Now, soldering, think of soldering as gluing with another metal that melts at a lower temperature. And when I say another metal, I mean the metal that is not what you're trying to attach, but silver solder. Silver solder comes in four different melting degrees, and we refer to them as hard, medium, easy, and extra easy. 
And they're set up like that so that when you solder, each additional seam or joint that you solder doesn't melt the previous seam. Now the torch has a key right on top of the tank right here, the acetylene tank. That's the only thing you should be messing around with as far as turning the tank on. Make sure it's off and then turn it a mere eighth of a turn. That's fine. Make sure your tip is on and it's tight and it's turned the direction you want it to. I prefer the medium tip for almost everything that's going on in class. If you're soldering something together, you can do it perfectly fine on top of a fire brick or on a screen or you can use a third hand like this to hold it in the air. Make sure that you have your flux is of a decent consistency. Sometimes they're left out and they get uh, very dried out. Just add water if that's the case. 